Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about blow-by, which doesn't sound like the most exciting of subjects, but it's probably your best indicator of engine wear. And in this video we're going to be talking about how we troubleshoot blow-by, difference between a blow, high blow-by and high crankcase pressure, what causes blow-by, what causes high crankcase pressure, how we troubleshoot blow-by, and uh, what are the causes of it. Alright, so stay tuned. First, let's go over the location of your blow-by tube. Usually it's coming off the valve cover or the valve cover base. Here it is on the C12 or the side of the block, usually on the driver's side of the engine. And then it dumps somewhere, usually by the oil pan. And uh, the reason there is blow-by, for the most part, is there's leakage around the piston and the cylinder wall caused by the gaps in the piston rings and the fact that the rings and the cylinder wall do not make a 100% seal. And the heavier the load, meaning the heavier the throttle and higher boost, the more the blow-by is going to increase. And especially with older engines with the glazing or cylinder damage, you're going to have more blow-by. Uh, other places, you can get them from your valve seals. They can leak a little bit of uh, uh, air into the crankcase. And also your turbocharger, Due to the fact that the seal on the turbocharger is not also 100% seal, can cause a little bit of excess blow-by. Also your air compressor, but that's pretty rare. So now that you kind of go over the basics of what blow-by is, let's talk about some of the troubleshooting aspects of it. So let's say you have an engine that the customer suspects has high blow-by or they're getting high crankcase pressure faults. Well, there's a difference between high blow-by and high crankcase pressure faults. Let's get that out of the way first. So high crankcase pressure is usually caused by a restriction somewhere in the, if it has a crankcase filter that can be restricted or the blow-by tube is restricted. Um, it can also be caused by very high blow-by volume, but high crankcase pressure does not indicate necessarily that you have high blow-by because Pressure is caused by a restriction, not necessarily flow or volume of mass flowing. Um, a lot of the older engines do not have crankcase pressure sensors either, so you're strictly going to be measuring volume. And I'm going to be going over how we do that uh, here in a minute or two in this video. So if you have high crankcase pressure codes, make sure you don't have a restriction in either your crankcase filter. Um, or the tube leading out of the crankcase filter because that will cause you a high crankcase pressure fall. Also, some of the older cats, their atmospheric pressure sensor is inside the engine and it reads, it basically reads crankcase pressure as your atmospheric pressure. So if you have a restriction and you're getting atmospheric pressure faults, even though the sensor is okay, it could be caused by the blow by tube being plugged or the crankcase filter being plugged on some of the newer motors. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the amount of blow-by. This is your best indicator for high blow-by. This is not high crankcase pressure, this is high blow-by volume. And the best rule of thumb for diesel engines is two times horsepower. That's how you're going to measure blow-by. So let's say you have a C7 with 300 horsepower and it's measured in cubic feet per hour. And I'll be going over that in this controller. And so what you're gonna do is say it's a 300 horsepower motor. You're gonna have to put that engine under full load. So road test or dyno. And so what's double 300 is 600. So that's your benchmark. And that's, that's a pretty good rule of thumb for pretty much any diesel engine. Um, CATS specifics vary from 1.5 horsepower to two horsepower two times horsepower all their measurements but I always go by the two because sometimes an engine can be running fine and it, it might have a little bit of high blow by um, so number one cause of high blow by is worn rings or cylinder damage and uh, basically if you've got an older engine you're measuring blow by to see the wear in that engine if it's over that threshold of two times horsepower so say it's a C15 500 horsepower <clears throat> If it has a thousand cubic feet per hour or more of blow by, 
that indicates that cylinders are worn and you're most likely going to have to do a rebuild. So let's go over how that's troubleshot in this video. So here we have an RV, a 3116 engine, and at the end of the blow-by tube I've affixed this cat blow-by volume that's basically our blow-by meter. You hook that to the end of the blow-by tube and then you run the wire to the controller. That's a hand controller that will tell you the volume. And then you have to run the engine under full load. So this is the controller and this engine's rated 235 horsepower so it should not get over 470 uh, cubic feet per hour. And here we are running it under load and it's getting up to 1159 cubic feet so that's about four times as much as it should so this engine's pretty much shot Damn. and uh, this is how you test blow by you just you hook up that little system and you run it either on the dyno or on the road and to find out what the blow by readings are all right so on that rv motor that had the four times blow by volume let's say we want to eliminate the turbocharger and the intake valve seals from possible sources of causing that high blow by. So what you would do is, since you're always going to have a little bit of boosted air leaking past the intake valves, and you're going to have a little bit of air of boosted air leaking past your turbine seal on your turbocharger, you can hook a CAC tester or an intercooler tester to the inlet of the turbocharger which will pressurize the intake turbine, the CAC, and then the cylinder head on the intake side. Uh, make sure all your valves are closed, obviously. And uh, what you can do is remove the valve cover and the oil return line on the turbocharger. And you're looking for huge sources of leaks. So if the turbocharger turbine seal has failed, you'll get a ton of air passing through that into the return line, the return oil line. Also, if your intake valves are leaking poorly, you'll hear it if you have the valve covers removed. Um, but usually the source of the blow-by is not the turbo or the intake valve seals. It's usually cylinders. And uh, especially with that high volume, you're really not going to see that much from a, a turbocharger seal. And if the turbocharger seals usually fail, you're going to start seeing oil in your intake ports. Because the oil, there's pressure on both sides. You have oil pressure and boost pressure. But um, it, I have seen it where the turbocharger failure and the intake valve seals might cause your boost to be slightly elevated if they failed. Um, but you're probably not going to see you know crazy numbers like four times what it should be just from those small seal failures. Also look for signs of cylinder damage. Uh, have they had a lot of overheats, so you might have cylinder damage from that, or high mileage. And uh, if you do, you know, you suspect cylinder damage, you know, just pull that oil pan, look up in the cylinders, and uh, see how bad they are. All right. So here is an RV at idle. This is the blow-by tube. This engine is pretty much destroyed. If this is what your blow-by looks like at idle, and uh, you can smell the burned oil in it, it's done. And I hope you found this video uh, helpful. If you're troubleshooting or own a motor, uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you.